let me start. Um, this is identification of variations and basic valuation of variations through FIDIC 2017, right? This particular third line has not been added within the uh, introduction that you have been given in that uh, poster, but uh, we should move forward with the newest trends in the market. Therefore, I, I thought of introducing the FIDIC 2017 version, uh, how FIDIC 2017 version looks into the variation aspect and what are the new trends, what are the things that we have added, right? So uh, <clears throat> let us move on to what we are going to do today, the points to ponder. Um, first of all, even though I have not mentioned here, I will give you in a nutshell what a variation is and what is the background related to the variation and what are the, uh, what are the key words that you should be knowing um, because I know that this is from fresh graduate up to uh, a professional of, uh, let's say, 30, 35 years of uh, experience. So this is a big span, right? It's like a product differentiation. I, I should uh, address all of you. Therefore, uh, I may not go into the basics to, the, to a greater extent. And in the meantime, I will be touching some soft spots uh, pertaining to the uh, uh, contemporary changes, the, the newest changes in the market, which has been embraced by the professionals in the world. Right. <clears throat> so I will first be letting you know what a variation is. We all know what a variation is, but then how it becomes a variation and what is the significance of identifying a variation. And then we are going to talk about whether somebody can object to a variation, whether the contractor, especially because, you know, whenever there, there is a contract between the parties, um, there is there are two parties. Parties is a defined term, as you all know, right? Between the parties, there is a there is a contract. Uh, the contract uh, is intact until and unless we do certain changes. But there are certain nomenclature, certain wordings that we need to be identifying with respect to a variation. And then I'm going to move on to some important words which is being used by contract administrators, which are known as the necessity and appropriateness, right? And then I will move on to um, another very important event uh, in, during the course of a project wherein you want to have lean management, wherein you want to have the best outcome of what you invest, which is known as value engineering. Then um, we all know about omissions and we all know about provisional sums. I will be touching those areas as well. Uh, non-Sinhala-speaking community in Nava. Eka Nisa, Eka Nanda Sadaar Nya Kvena Vidhita, Mugod Akkila Vata, Apeita Puluwaang, Summarize Karna Kota, Eta Amatara Vata, Me, Me Deka Blend Karla, Mama Switch Chena Vata, English Saha Sinhala Tara Tura. I think, Sinhala Mama Explain Karna Vata, Adi, Yama Akte Runa Nya Tunot, non-Sinhala-speaking community Eka, Mata Sama Vata, Namut Mama Hitana, Api, Eka Evidhira Karagane Yama Vila, Right? Eta Kota Me, Variation Kye Neka, Godak Vedagat Diyak, Contract administration will be. It would have a coma the variation of Andunagani, variation of Kiani Mohak, the Kiena Pilimada, Mama Yamtam, Yamta, Durakata, Idripat Kerno, Itamatar, Api, variation of Idripat Kerot, a variation Nikatapi, Birud the Vimata, Erehi Vimata Haki Avakti, no, the contract again a catheter, Eka Wati, Sakasunu. Vapasari Mohak, the Monomona de Valena, the Pikataga and Gila, a big event the Katagana. Younger me watch another Katina necessity. Necessity and Avashatavi. Avashatavi is a appropriateness. Eka Kuchera do it a suitable, Kuchera do it a gallop in order. Avashatavi is a gallopima, Kina Karna digger, a big home the variation seeker, some someone the Karagani. Ekitihasi Pura out of the Vichaya, Ekana Katagana. Younger value engineering Kinega, Oladana. On the Sankal Tech, Value Engineering Kenny, Api Vyadam Karna Mudaleta, Adala Outcome Maker, Adala Return Nikalabino Adakil, 
බලාගන්න පුළුවන් දෙයක් තමයි වැලියු ඉංජිනියරින් කියන්නේ ඊට අමතරව අපි අන්නෙසසරි කොස්ට්ස් එහෙම නැත්නම් නැත්නම් අනවශ්‍ය වියදම් කපා හැරලා ඒ කියන සේම් ෆන්ක්ෂන් එකම සේම් ක්වොලිටි එකම අපි ලබා ගන්න ක්‍රමයේ දෙයක් තමයි අපි වැලියු ඉංජිනියරින් කියලා කියන්නේ right ඊට පස්සේ අපි මේ ඩීලිං විත් ඔමිෂන්ස් කියන එක මේක ගොඩක් සංවාදයට තුඩු දුන් ගොඩක් මතවේදයට තුඩු දුන් කාරණයක් කොන්ට්‍රැක්ට් ඇඩ්මිනිස්ට්‍රේෂන් වලදී අපි ඒක සම්බන්ධයෙන් ලෝකය බලන්නේ කොහොමද පිරික් භාවිත කරන රටවල් 140කට වැඩි කන් රට රටවල් ප්‍රමාණයක් විසින් මේක කොහොමද ප්‍රැක්ටිකලි ප්‍රායෝගිකව මේක දැක්කේ කොහොමද ඒ රටවල් නීතිමය පසුබිම අනුව ඒක කොහොමද අපි හැඩ ගැහුණු කියලා අපි කතා කරනවා එතකොට ප්‍රොවිෂනල් සම්ස් කියන එක ඔගොල්ලෝ දන්නවා contract එකක් sign කරද්දි අපිට යම් කිසි කර්තව්‍යයකට යම් කිසි work spots එකට අපිට හරි හරි definition එකක් අපිට දෙන්න බැරි වුණොත් හරියට ඒක break down එකක් work break down structure එකක් අපිට කතා කරගන්න බැරි වුණොත් අපි ගොඩක් කෙනාවට ඒකට අදාළ මුදල් ප්‍රමාණයක් the chunk of money කියලා කියනවා අපි ඒකට allocate කරනවා අන්න ඒ chunk of money අපි administer කරන්නේ කොහොමද මේ variation process එක තුල කියලා අපි කතා කරන්න right necessity versus appropriateness uh this is a very well uh, uh, discussed subject uh, i just use this cartoon in order to identify that uh, uh, there is a necessity uh, to have seat belts when you are driving a car right uh, you might have experienced that when the car exceeds 5 km per hour even a simple brake would suffice in order for you to collide with the steering wheel in order for you to collide with the uh, <coughs> front of the car therefore it's very important that you have uh, uh, seat belts so this is necessity right uh, the right hand side is a joke actually when a when a wife is uh, driving by the side of the husband it's better to have a seat belt like this it is not an insult to the ladies of the world right so if it is other way around it will be the same right so uh, appropriateness sometimes we call appropriate certain things right so we need to identify what is necessity and what is appropriateness when it comes to the context of a variation so just keep that in mind and then we'll move forward vitiate or invalidate <clears throat> what do you mean by vitiate what do you mean by invalidate vitiate means that you the, the whole contract become invalidated the con whole contract become uh, not not valid or something like that i'll give you sort of a example uh, there was a coronation ceremony organized in uk uh, and one of the tenants one of the tenants he wanted to uh, hire a, a particular observation gallery right so they signed a contract what is a contract contract is a agreement between the parties which are legally effective okay but all of a sudden this particular coronation ceremony became they didn't want they, they couldn't have it because the king was ill king was not well therefore that particular contract signed between the parties became ineffective because there is no event as such in order for them to exercise the terms and conditions of the contract so that is how a contract becomes invalidate or vitiate right uh, there there will be another way to look at it and i'll look into that one separately when i come into the proper context of the variation so keep within your mind these four words which i am talking about necessity appropriateness vitiate or invalidate okay so these four words are very important when you administer the variations දැන් අපි අවශ්‍යතාවය සහ ගැලපෙන භාවය කියන ගැන අපි කතා කරොත් එහෙම අපි අවශ්‍යතාවය කියන එක අපි ගොඩක් වෙලාවට පැන නැගෙන්නේ නීතිමය රාමුවක් තුල වෙන්න පුළුවන් එහෙම නැත්නම් contractual contract එක එකේ තියෙන terms and conditions සහ වෙන්න පුළුවන් සරලම උදාහරණයක් අපි seat belt වාහනයකදී භාවිත කරන්න ඕනේ ඒක තමයි necessity කියලා කියන්නේ appropriateness කියන එක ගොඩක් අපි කතා කරන විදිහට අපි ගත්තාම අපි ඒකට කියනවා it is an it is a very subjective term it is not an objective term මට appropriate වෙන සමහර දෙයක් වෙන කෙනෙක් appropriate නොවෙන්න පුළුවන් සමහර වෙලාවට ඔබලෝ දැකලා ඇති wedding එකකට අපි sports shoes දෙකක් දාගෙන කොට කලිසමක් අරගෙන ගියොත් එහෙම ඒක අනිත් අය 
ियन उदाहरण contract again ek tender karanawa contract again ek tender review ekak karanawa eke api yam kisi e sambandhen api negotiation ekak karanawa point karanawa e ko me ekak tunama me procurement kiyana word ekak hadila thiyenne contractual context again etawada api hithuwoth ehema yam kisi contract ekak kenek api appoint karanawa reinforced steel structure ekak hadanna හරිද reinforced steel structure එකක් හදන්න අපි ඒ contract appoint කරනවා නමුත් ටික කාලයක් යද්දී employed හිතනවා නෑ මම මේ කියන particular in concrete structure එක මට සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම structural steel කරන්න ඕනේ කියලා right දැන් උදාහරණයක් විදිහට ගත්තොත් සමහර buildings තියෙනවා එක්තරා height එකෙන් උදා engineers ලව ගැන හොඳටම දන්නවා engineering background එකෙන් කියන කොට steel කියන්නේ lightweight concrete roof sapeksha light weight එතකොට අපි ගොඩක් උඩට යනකොට high rise buildings හදනකොට අපිට concrete structure එකකට concrete structure එකකින් අපිට ඒ කියන දේ කරගන්න බැරි වෙනවා නමුත් අපි හිතමු මේ contract එක award කරාට පස්සේ අපි මේ reinforced steel structure එක අපි සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම වෙනස් කරනවා මේ structural steel structure එකකට ඒක කොච්චර දුරට මේ variation කියන ක්‍රමවේදය ඇතුලේ තියනවද එහෙම දෙයක් අපිට කරන්න පුළුවන්ද ඒ ගැන අපි කතා කරනවා right ඒක තමයි අපි කතා කරන්නේ right so this is the most old version nalin i just wanted to know whether this wording can be read, read by you is it is it sufficient enough the size is sufficient enough mm, yes 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 great great mr well can see it's right. visible enough okay. yes okay this is the fidi credit book 1977 version okay so this is the um, this is the wording of 1977 version of fidi why i use this one because this is the origin this is the origin of the variation clause which has been subsequently transformed into a version which is more contractor prone which is more negotiable which is more pragmatic <clears throat> fidi credit book 1977 uh, was issued uh, long time back that is 1977 right uh, almost my age uh, so when they issued this particular uh, version they spoke about five things let us read it and then we are let us quickly read it you might have read it uh, many a times the modified version but i want to highlight something to you here uh, the engineer shall make any variation of the form quality or quantity of the works you can see in the second line the second word is the works right so then the question comes whether a variation can be issued to any other thing no a variation can be issued to what is known as the works we were discussing about this particular defined term called works in sbd2 standard bidding document Uh, you define this as permanent works temporary works and contractors documents but in all the other fidic uh, versions fidic standard forms they use it as the permanent works and temporary works and either of them as appropriate okay so what can be changed as a variation is the works can be changed right some people they get a wrong impression that you change the contract 
and I have seen so in certain places that you you call it as variation to the contract, right? Engineer does not have the authority to exercise a variation to the contract or any other thing because there is a there is a identifiable there is a tangible difference between what is known as the contract and what is known as the works. What is known as the contract with a capital C is the set of documents which forms this particular legal relationship in very simple terms. What is the legal relationship? I'll give you a very simple example. Legal relationship has to have something called the consideration. Okay, the consideration. Consideration means I will pay you or I will give you something for what you did to me, monetary terms. It doesn't necessarily be uh, in writing. We can form a contract in verbal terms as well. For example, the person that who is washing your car every day, right? And you will give him a verbal uh, promise that uh, I will, uh, if you wash my car, at the end of the day, I'll give you 50 dirhams. Sorry about uh, my, uh, what do you call it? Currency, which is being used, 50 dirhams is almost uh, 100, uh, 150 into 100. It's about 5,000 Sri Lankan rupees, right? So I give him verbal uh, promise that if you wash my car every day, by the end of the month, I will give you uh, <coughs> 5,000 Sri Lankan rupees, right? So it is a verbal contract. It is not a something written, but it is a contract because you give some sort of a promise to this person, a consideration. I will pay you something if you do the car. But if that particular person did not uh, wash the roof of the car, I am not bound to pay him the full amount pertaining to what I have promised to him. So this looks like to you like a variation to the contract. There is no such a thing until and unless the parties agree. Let me explain to you once again. When you enter into a contract with certain terms and conditions, and if you want to change the terms and conditions, for example, this person who is washing the car, he will say, sir, I will not um, wash the uh, roof of the car. You, you do it. Then you pay me 3000 because of that. So you have to agree once again. At the end of the day, you cannot say, I did not pay this one. I did not do this particular person. Therefore, you pay me half. Okay. So th there are certain things which is uh, revolving around this particular concept. Therefore, variations, whenever you are talking about variations, you have to have this particular term variation to the works. Okay. So variation to the contract is not what we are talking about as variations. Right. So then it has been, uh, it, has, it has been clarified. Then we are going into the, any part thereof that may have been approved by the employer and shall have the power to order the contractor. Power to order the contractor. Right. So somebody ha can has to give the engineer the power to order the contractor to vary the works. Why does he need to do that one? Because uh, the power to order has been given by the employer because engineer is not part of the contract. Most of the people, they are very questioned about this thing. Then how come the engineer acts as a contract administrator? How come the engineer uh, takes place a very major role when he's doing a contract as such, right? So the employer and the contractor are the people who are parties to the contract. Therefore, if a third party comes into play, you have to give them the power. You have to give them some sort, some sort of a subletting in order for him to exercise these things. So who can make the variations? It is the engineer. It is not the employer, not the contractor. Then what can be varied? It is the works which can be varied, right? Who can make the variations? That is the engineer who can do the variations, right? And then there are five things that the engineer can do. The first and foremost thing, as you are very well aware, very well conversant is the increase or decrease the quantity of any work included in the contract. It's very easy because if you are using a bill of quantities, if you are using a set of drawings, if you are using a set of 
specification you in introduce a change to the quantity you introduce a change to the quantity which is known as a variation is there a limit to do that or yes okay so keep that in mind and then we'll move forward then it comes the most controversial part of the variation which is known as omit any such word then you may be asked the question asking the question how on earth you unilaterally decide to omit a work yes you can right until 1999 version of the fidic of course uh, until sbd2 version the omission of any such work was construed by the contract administrators as his magic wand as his own sole authority who can do that one without any complications without any conditions without any problem but it is a wrong assessment because there are certain things which are embedded within the work what is not word which is known as omission i'm going to talk about it later right and then the change the character or quality of any kind of such work you might have observed several times right instead of this marble you use that marble especially in this middle east part of the world in middle eastern countries sometimes we order italian marble and all of a sudden we find a substitute we find a substitute in the local market which has the same character same quality but at a cheaper price there's a very nice concept called in country value which is a much needed concept to sri lanka icv concept i'll tell you what it is most of the variations in the construction contracts in this part of the world are been introduced with this icv concept icv concept means the money generated within a particular country is retained within that particular country for example this marble which i am talking about when you produce marble in this particular country and you use this particular marble for the installation works in the contract you are not giving any money outside the country but if you order an italian marble simple concept right if you order an italian marble you need dollars okay so icv concept has been highly regarded as uh, an eligibility to the contractor a prerequisite for the contractor uh, to become eligible to win works it is not only due to uh, the price or the amount of the particular work and but also it talks about uh, the quality of the works which is been done right so that is what is known as the icv then the engineer has the authority to change the levels lines positions and dimensions of any part of the works then it comes that particular important word what is known as the engineer has the authority to execute additional work any kind necessary for the completion of the works as i have told you this necessity is challenged okay this necessity is challenged by the contractors over the past couple of years and it's a very important thing we will discuss about that one right so uh, then it says no such variation shall in any way vitiate or invalidate the contract but the value if any of all such variation shall be taken into account in asserting in the amount of contract price i am not going to much of a word uh, struggle in this regard i will Uh, quickly narrate about what we are talking about here then variation ekak kiyana ekak api katha ganna kota godak kaya katha ganna varadi akalpayak thamai variation to the contract kiyala deyak gena katha ganna namuth me api variations kiyala me katha garanni variations to the works kiyana ekena vitarai mokada hetuwa apita wenas karanna puluwang me terminology eke hatiyata works kiyana de vitarai right එතකොට works කියන දේ SBD2 version එකේ ගත්තොත් අපි define කරන්නේ permanent works temporary works සහ ඒකට අමතරව තවත් කැලක් අපි එකතු කරලා තියෙනවා contractors documents කියලා. ඒගොල්ලෝ define terms section එකට ගියොත් ඔයගොල්ලන්ට ඒක තේරෙයි. නමුත් FIDIC standard terminology එකේ අපි works කියන එක අපි කතා කරන්නේ permanent works සහ temporary works එහෙම නැත්නම් ඒ දෙකෙන් එකක් කියන එක තමයි අපි ගොඩක් කලට කතා කරන්නේ right. එතකොට මේකට අනුව अभी इंजीनियर यम किसी बल आगे दिन नो ना वेरिएशन ना किशु करना ना तो 
ඉංජිනියරට එකසැරේටම එයා කොන්ට්‍රැක්ට් ඇඩ්මිනිස්ට්‍රේටර් වෙ වුණ පලියට එයාට මේ වේරියේෂන් එක ඉෂු කරන්න බෑ. එතකොට ඒ බලය තමයි එම්ප්ලොයර් කියන කෙනා අපි ගොඩක් ලාට ඉංජිනියරට දෙන්නේ. එතකොට ඒ අනුව ඉංජිනියරට කළ කළ හැකි කාර්යයන් පහක් තියෙනවා. ඒ කාර්යයන් මම ඉංග්‍රීසියෙන් සරලව විස්තර කරා. මොකක්ද පලයන එක තමයි යම් කිසි වැඩ කොටසක part of the works, right? Any work included in the contract. දැන් මෙතන දී ඔයගොල්ලන් අහන්න පුළුවන් මොකද මේ මෙතන මේ අර capital W වලින් පටන් ගන්න simple S වලින් ඉවර වෙන works නැතුව මෙතන work කියලා තියෙන. හොඳ දෙයක් ඒක ඒක ප්‍රශ්න උත්තරේ ගත්තොත් මෙතන තියෙනවා work කියලා කියනකොට temporary works, permanent works වලට අමතරව තවත් කොටසක් තියෙනවා. මොනවද මේ තවත් කොටස? ඔයගොල්ලෝ site එකට ගියාම ඔයගොල්ලෝ දකිනවා අපි දමු site එකේ තියෙනවා safety signs. එහෙම නැත්නම් speed එක reduce කරන්න ඕන කියලා යම් යම් signs දාලා තියෙනවා. දැන් අපි හිතමු engineer කියනවා නෑ. ඔගොල්ලෝ මේ safety signs පොඩ්ඩක් වැඩි කරන්න ඕන. අන්න ඒක වැටෙන්නේ ඔන්න ඔය work කියන ගැටේ ගණයට. මොකද ඒක permanent works වත් temporary works වත් නෙවෙයි. මොකද මේ permanent works කියලා කියන්නේ? මේක ගැනත් හොඳ controversial කතාවක් තියෙනවා. Permanent works කියලා කියන්නේ the works which remains at site. Temporary works කියලා කියන්නේ any other works which is required to complete the permanent works හරිද එතකොට the works which remain at site කියලා කිව්වාම ගොඩක් වෙලාවට කතා කරන්නේ මේ මේ හදන බිල්ඩින් එක බ්‍රිජ් එක එහෙමත් නැත්නම් අපි හදන යම් කිසි දෙයක් තමයි අපි ගොඩක් වෙලාවට කියන්නේ නමුත් මෙතන පොඩි ගැටලුවක් ඇති වෙනවා සමහර වෙලාවට අපි කතා කරනවා sacrificial form work කියලා එකක් ගැන නේද මොනවද මේ sacrificial form work කියලා කියන්නේ අපි දන්නවා C channel එකක් අපි use කරොත් එහෙම soil volume එකක් retain කරන්න මේ C channel එක අපිට දිගටම තියා ගන්න වෙනවා නේ මේ C channel එක අපිට අයින් කරන්න බෑ right එතකොට ඒක sacrificial form work එකක් බවට පත් වෙනවා එතකොට මෙන්න මේ කියන thin line එක permanent work සහ temporary works කියන දෙකේ වෙනස thin line එක ගොඩක් වෙලාවට මේ NEC new engineering contract කියන version එකේදී අපි identify කරගන්නේ නැහැ හරි ඒක අපි ෆිඩික් වලදී තමයි අපි identify කරන්නේ මේ works කියන එක දෙකට කඩලා permanent work සහ temporary works හරි ඉතින් ඒක තමයි මතක කතා කරන්නේ ඊට පස්සේ මේ omission කියන එක ඔගොල්ලෝ දන්නවා අපි omission කියලා කිව්වාම අපි ඔළුවට ඉන්නේ එකසැරේටම යමක් මකා දමනවා කියන එක නේ යමක් මකා දමනවා නම් ඒ මකා දමනදී වෙන කාටවත් දෙන්න බෑ ඕන ඔතන තමයි ගොඩක් කොන්ට්‍රවර්සි එකක් ඇති වුණේ ගොඩක් ආය අතර ගැටලු ඇති වුණේ කොහොමද මකා දමනවා නම් ඒක වෙන කෙනෙක්ට දෙන්නේ කියලා එතකොට ඒකට අපි පොඩි කැලක් ඇඩ් කරන්න සිද්ධ වුණා ඒකනම් අපි ඉස්සරහට කතා කරනවා ඊට පස්සේ change the character or quality of any kind of such work ඔබලා දන්නවා යම් යම් දේවල් වල මම කියමු මාබල් උදාහරණය වගේ අපිට යම් යම් දේවල් වල ක්වොලිටි එක අපිට වෙනස් කරන්න පුළුවන් අපිට අවශ්‍ය වෙයි රයිට් ඒක වෙනස් කරාම මොකද වෙන්නේ ඒ වෙනස් වීම තුලින් ඒක රිෆ්ලෙක්ට් වෙනවා ඩ්‍රෝවින්ග්ස් සහ ස්පෙසිෆිකේෂන් වලින් ඊට පස්සේ ලෙවල්ස් ලයින්ස් පොසෙෂන් දැන් හොඳ උදාහරණයක් තමයි දැන් ඕමාන් රාජ්‍ය මම වැඩ කරන කාල සීමාව ඇතුළත ඕමාන් වලට ආවා සයික්ලෝන් එකක් මම ගිය සතිය එකට කතා කරා සයික්ලෝන් ගෝනු කියලා මේ සයික්ලෝන් ගෝනු එක ආවට පස්සේ ඕමාන් රාජ්‍යයේ තියෙන ලොකුම ජාත්‍යන්තර ගුවන් තොටුපළ ඒ කරපු ලොකුම ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක තමයි ඒක ශ්‍රී ලංකා ඉංජිනේරු වරු හිටියා මේකේ ස්ට්‍රක්චරල් ඉංජිනේස් ලා හිටියට ඒ ප්‍රදේශය සම්පූර්ණයෙන්ම යට වුණා ඊට පස්සේ හැමෝම තීරණය කරා ඒකට මස්කට් ඉන්ටර්නැෂනල් එයාබෝට් එකේ ලෙවල් එක මීටර් දෙකකින් අපි උස්සනවා කියලා මට මතක නැහැ මීටර් අද්ද මීටර් දෙකක්ද කියලා दुक्टू <coughs> मिन्न में किया ना necessity किया ना वाचन ऐटर तब क्या लक एक तूना उगल ना तो मेरे पेन हुआ ये मुखाक दे एक तूना क्या लक मेरे कड़ा भी किया ना appropriateness किया ला right देंगे उगल ना तो मेरे को पेन हुआ मिन्न में appropriateness किया ना वाचन या इससे लाम फिडिक terminology एक ढाबे दस समस्या सुहाते variation किया ना concept एक ऐतुले इन बातें तब पढ़ी क्या लक एक � The engineer shall make any variation to the form quality. May the outcome be alike. But see, now, in his opinion, be appropriate. This is a very, very important thing, right? Now, the engineer. If you see the previous version, he does not talk about the engineer's opinion. Here, we talk about two additional things. Now, 
this is an evolution like the man has evolved from the so called uh, ape we are evol evolving right so due to the uh, confrontations by the contractor due to the disputes due to the things that we experienced uh, uh we understand that there are certain things which needs to be changed that is why these new words have been introduced so i'm not going to talk about all these things but the chain things i'm going to talk about right so there is one thing which i need to highlight here as well uh, that will also be highlighted then those three things i'll be uh, i'll be highlighting then we'll move on to the new era of fidic related to the variations and there are a lot of things we need to discuss in this regard uh, nalin am i going too fast or am i going too slow um, i i believe this is the perfect speed you are following and your experience based on that this is the best one yeah please okay thank you um, because you know that uh, when i am with a physical audience i can see your faces whether you are enjoying my lecture whether you are yawning or something like that but here i cannot see i'm just looking at a screen and i imagine that there's a nice bunch of thousand people who are in front of me and then i am discussing right so it's a nice and, experience uh, so uh, just just to make a little break then uh, mr priyanka there are there were two questions received through our whatsapp groups one mm -hmm. is uh, i think one of a very basic question increase or decrease quantity is very mm -hmm. for lump sum contract that was the basic question i mm. think uh, we can go ahead and the other one is uh, but it was a controversial one increase a contractor quoted exceptionally higher price for an item mm. and there is a scope change for that item will engineer okay. to reduce to that minimize the cost this is simply simply like if you have some higher priced item so can he can the engineer reduce it as a variation or remove it and give it to somebody else or just to omit it to do it uh, at at the latter part of the contract so there okay. are two areas as yeah. well yeah so you want me to explain it now or can we move uh, forward and no not required i think we better have it at the q and a session and we'll have okay, a sure. we'll move into the q and a session at that time i just want to give some message to the audience as well we have that attendance to be marked at that time so we'll excellent once you are done with okay. the core content and we'll play that small video clip from our sponsors at that time yeah. we'll publish the attendance link as well in our zoom and the youtube channel so then we can have the break of one or two minutes for that as well yeah please okay. please proceed okay. sure thank you right now <clears throat> i told you there are certain things which has been added in fidic 2000 uh, sorry 1987 version one is it talks about the opinion of the engineer and then they added the version of uh, the word appropriateness and the most important thing regarding omission this spoke about something something has been added because i told you that omission does not fit into uh, the context of the contractor the, the intent of the contract so let's talk about it very interesting right <clears throat> engineer's opinion you might remember this particular uh, slide uh, this is dr bean as they call him all right he was a non performer in a uk uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uk museum and he was uh, he was taken to usa he was sent to usa uh, to do this uh, particular presentation pertaining to a, a painting call uh, the whistler's mother he didn't know anything about artist because when his colleague asked about with leonardo da vinci was a, a, a rugger player he said yes okay so something like that so when dr bean was asked to give his opinion about uh the whistler's mother he said that first of all this particular picture is quite large so if it is very small or microscopic nobody will be able to see that part so very very point isn't it right but engineer's opinion is not something like a person who doesn't know the subject engineer's opinion is engineer is known as a trained contract administrator who is supposed to have the know how who is supposed to have the expertise who is supposed to have the experience pertaining to the change so now let us go back once again where this particular word opinion has been mentioned in it says <clears throat> in his opinion be appropriate 
he shall have the authority to instruct the contractor to do the contract and shall do any of the following right so the opinion can change right engineer's opinion sometimes is can be subjective engineer might think that this is correct engineer might think that this is not correct uh, therefore even though he is an experienced person there is no independent way of measuring whether the engineer's opinion is correct or not this is where the the the, the question came into play therefore fidik decided that engineer's opinion is not a word which is appropriate to uh, instruct a variation okay therefore uh, it has been subsequently omitted in certain places and i'll let you know how it has come into play then we were talking about necessity as i have told you necessity arises actually in my youtube channel i spoke about this necessity versus appropriate appropriateness you might have, you can see in the one of the videos which i have published necessity arises due to two uh, things one is the legality the legal context the other one is contractual context right uh, i'll tell you what is the legal context you know that uh, when there are there are two uh, buildings in close proximity um, there should be a way for the fire trucks to uh, fire trucks to enter into any place of the building in the case of a fire so this is known as a safety measure which is to be taken care of by the uh, a particular country so that is a legal case now all of a sudden let's say they decided the government decided that all the buildings there previously there was a gap of let's say 5 meters now all of a sudden they decided that this needs to be changed to 7 meters so poor designers not knowing about this particular fact has designed uh, two buildings with the gap of one existing building one not an existing building a new building with the gap of 5 meters now the foundation has been uh, constructed so the engineer has to issue engineer shall issue a variation in order to cut down that strip of 2 additional meters otherwise it will not be approved or we have to shift the total building so these are uh, the variations generated out of the necessity due to legality right and then the necessity comes into play uh, since there are many structural engineers here there is no uh, nothing to explain about this one uh, the uh, concrete in weak concrete is weak in tension okay concrete is weak in tension therefore that is why we have more reinforcement towards the bottom part of a beam or a slab right suppose that during the checks carried out by the contractor he found out that the bottom reinforcement one months would not suffice i think you are using bs8110 we are using some euro codes here as well so uh, as per the concrete design criteria the bottom reinforcement would not suffice in order to accommodate the tensile force of the structure okay so uh, contractor says mr engineer we found that there is some an error in the calculation so we need a variation in order to accommodate that additional reinforcement you calculate and let us know so this is how the necessity will come into play when you talk about the contractual necessity so the necessity in is twofold one is due to legality one is due to contractual that also has become a question and when you uh, understand when you see the evolution of the pd credit book uh, you will understand this uh, why uh, um those wordings have been changed then you talk about this omission so now within brackets there is something we they mentioned you saw the earlier version omit any such work now it says omit any such work but not if the omitted work is to be carried out by the employer or by another contractor very well defined because as i have told you omission is a word which needs to be uh which which is known as something like the total deletion okay omission is total deletion so um, then if you omit something 
with the view of giving it to someone else now actually this is linked to one of the questions that uh, nalin has highlighted assume that the employer feels that the contractor's rate for a particular item of work is actually high so engineer uh, pretends okay or oh, the employer pretends i don't need this particular work but in the back of his mind you know that is called bad faith it's not good faith uh, especially in the civil law countries like oman uae and all these countries uh, we have something called good faith and fair dealing so it is part of our law i'm sure it in sri lanka also is the same so if you are not acting in good faith it you can be sued right so likewise you can uh, here the the question is whether this uh, uh, omitted works can be uh, reintroduced to someone else just to get a financial advantage it is no it's a big no okay therefore omission has been defined in uh, most of the areas uh, uh so like that uh, how it goes right now let's uh, then move on to the uh, appropriateness right we all know uh, it was a much felt requirement uh, for a country to come to uh, sri lanka in a very crisis situation and to play a cricket game with us so as a gesture of uh, gratitude we all wore uh, uh, yellow color and some said it is inappropriate some said it's appropriate that is based on your belief right isn't it it is not a clear cut margin which says whether this is appropriate or not appropriate now some people came up with an argument uh, how can we identify the cheering party sri lanka right okay like that i mean there are certain arguments i am not saying i am not into the fact saying about my opinion about this one but you know that appropriateness once again is not a clear cut situation like the necessity even at least the necessity can be defined in terms of legality and the contract but appropriateness is not okay now let us go into the new era okay the new era with all these problems which have been uh, which have been faced by uh, our ancestors uh, the the past contract administrators and after a series of discussions between what fidic actually does is whenever there is a, a modified version of fidic they conduct a lot of seminars they conduct a lot of uh, uh, discussions in order to identify whose problems are these right and then the contractor came up with certain uh, questions and then answers have been given the fidic 99 version what you can see now the variation close is very extensive i am not going to go through all the sub clauses of variations if i were to do that and i it will take two days okay right into this depth right but i will be touching uh, very important areas uh, so that it is important because the first question which is asked is about the valuation of a variation in terms of a lump sum contract i'll explain you after this session and maybe maybe during the course of the session uh, i'll be explaining you certain things right now the what you can see on your left hand side is fidic red book 1999 version now please don't try to uh, mix what i have taught you on fidic 1987 and 77 and this one because now the whole scenario has been restructured the whole scenario has been restructured therefore there is no more necessity no more appropriateness but there are new things which has been included i'll give you one example the value engineering clause was not in existence until 1999 version of fidic the appropriateness that you speak about can easily be framed into the value engineering clause so actually the word appropriateness has been taken into account but with a new flavor with a new meaning with a new intention which is working for both parties so that is the uh, the glamour of it that is the beauty of it right so this is how fidic 99 version variation clause starts that is known as right to vary as i have told you in mindful contract administration ah the good news for you is that the introductory course of that one seminar will be in the next week uh, i hope uh, most of you have uh, <coughs> registered into that one so i am looking forward to see you right uh, there is some slight 
time 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 change i know that you are going ahead with uh, your series of discussions uh, but uh, i invite you all to attend that particular seminar it will be worth right so variations may be initiated by the engineer see the first few terms specifically says may okay may is a defined term in physics 2017 version defined in the sense identified term it is not a defined term actually it is uh, it is it is an identified term may means that the per party or person referred to has the choice of whether to act or not in the manner referred to so it is very clear without a variation you can administer a contract simple as that without a variation you can administer a contract that is why it says it is not compulsory it is may be initiated by the engineer so it is discretional at any time prior to issue in the taking over of the works either by an instruction or by a request for the contract to submit a proposal now what is this this is a new trend okay it talks about two things actually uh, previously when engineer instructs some it is like a one way one way valve or something like that previously when engineer issues an instruction yes contractor is bound to do that part it's like bureaucracy okay comply and complain okay i uh, instruct you and then you have to do it but here the, it, there is another form another version of the variation there is a version called request for proposal contractor has to submit a proposal the engineer says mr contractor i think instead of this particular 3d structure you can have a better structure in 2d form or something like that okay uh, i think that uh, this particular hvac arrangement can be changed something like that and then contractor with his experience because i remember when i was under training uh, there was a there was a nice proposal uh, what is known as uh, when you are when you are constructing a bridge bridge that is called incremental launching method i i think all of you, most of you are knowing about this incremental launching method is that you construct one part of the bridge and on top of that particular part of the bridge you continue construction so it is incremental launching method so likewise uh, that is speeding up rather than starting from scratch for each and every section of the um, a bridge right so uh, uh, if the contractor is a bridge expert the contractor is a high rise building expert now if you come to dubai or uae you might be seen thousands of buildings skyscrapers all are taller than our twin tower right and it has different architecture it may they might have gone through a lot of experience in how to construct these particular skyscrapers right so then it's very important the the bifidic 99 version looked into the variation clause in a different angle saying either it can be issued as an instruction or by a request for proposal right and then it comes into the uh, contractor shall execute now see variations may be initiated by the engineer but the contractor shall execute and be bound by each variations very very strong statement right very very strong statement is bound to do that one and there is a comma after the comma it says unless the contractor promptly gives notice to the engineer stating that the contractor cannot readily obtain the goods required for the variation this is a new thing isn't it previously when the engineer instructs something contractor is supposed to do that one it's like uh, we are dictating certain things to our kids right the way we were brought up we were not uh, meant to be arguing with our adults we were meant to be uh, bound by it's a good thing uh, you know that uh, it's a good thing as long, as long as the parents are telling the correct thing to do uh, it's a good thing that you are bound by uh, your parents advice to do something but here the contractor can come up there's one occasion that the contractor can object to a variation for the first time right what is this objection he cannot readily obtain the goods you can see the word goods has been capitalized why it has been capitalized because goods is a defined term which comprises of four elements which is known as the material plant 
temporary works and the contractor's equipment. If you see the definition of the goods, it talks about four things under the purview of the word goods. Materials, which starts from capital M. Plan, which starts from capital P. The temporary works and the contractor's equipment. Okay, so if the contractor is unable to get a proper machine in order to execute this particular variation, which is not a common thing which was foreseen before. Okay, so this is what is known as um, that, right? Uh, <clears throat> then uh, we are going to, uh, then we, uh, then when it came to FIDIC 2017 version, this has been expanded contractor's ability to uh, object to a variation has not been confined to the goods readily obtained, but also if the works are unforeseeable, having regard to the scope and nature of the works described in the specification. Now, what is known as this unforeseeability, right? Let me just explain you with one thing, or oh, no, not this one, right, unforeseeability. I have not done that one, right? Okay, fine. Oh, this is good. Uh, this is a good thing. Uh, forget about the wording in this one. I just wanted to concentrate on that a nice uh, technical cricketer called Sangakkar, right? Unforeseeability. When a bowler balls and the batsman is not in your side and you are the keeper, you have a very good connectivity between the bowler and the wicket keeper. But the wicket keeper cannot anticipate the where the ball pitches, isn't it? And wicket keeper cannot anticipate what the bat batman's reaction should be. You might have seen the Lance Krosner comes two meters, one and a half meters above the, uh, ahead of the wicket and then plays a six. And if he misses the ball, you can easily make him out, isn't it? So unforeseeability is everywhere, not only in cricket, right? So when we are talking about unforeseeability, you might have seen that the presentation is very long, right? So let's try because I will share this presentation, two of the presentations at the end of this session so that you can go through. I'm just highlighting something which is important only, right? Because I am more prone to answer the questions because variations is not a new subject, right? <clears throat> because uh, when you ask questions, it is very easy for me to uh, explain it with the uh, some sort of a theory part that is the most pragmatic way of learning right okay just coming back to this uh, the ability to object to a variation uh, then <clears throat> it talks about uh, the three things one is we have already discussed the other one is the unforeseeable nature of the work this is where the engineer cannot substantially change the specification i told you right <clears throat> so from a reinforced concrete structure, if the engineer wishes to change the works into a uh, what is known as uh, structural steel, he cannot do that one. If you see 13.1a, the varied work was unforeseeable having regard to the scope and nature works of described in the specification. Nowhere within the specification it talks about structural steel and it is actually against the technical uh, selection of the particular contractor as well, isn't it? Because when you select the particular contractor, you gave him some marks in the te technical um, qualifications. What are the marks that you have given him? Uh, you are a specialist in uh, reinforced concrete structures. You are not a specialist in structural steel work. Therefore, you are unable to give this sort of a variation. Therefore, that particular wording related to the uh, variations cannot be vitiated or invalidated is already embedded within this new form. So don't worry, it has not been eliminated. Okay. Then it says, if it adversely affects the contractor's ability to comply with the clause 4.8 and 4.18, you can later on read that one. That is basically related to the health and safety and environment. If the engineer issues an instruction or asks for a request for proposal and subsequently issues a variation, which is detrimental to the health and safety or the environment, you can challenge that. You can say, no, I am not 
able to do that part. If the engineer says that you are con constructing a particular hotel and uh, please uh, use that sewer line, discharge the sewer line into the nearby canal, you cannot do that. It is against the this thing. Now, you remember in 2004, December 26, I was lucky enough uh, not to travel at that time. Uh, tsunami came. If, if tsunami came on 25th night, I would have not been here, right? So we were traveling in a tri show uh, in Matara Beach coastline. Uh, after tsunami came, they changed the laws, isn't it? What is the change in the law? You cannot do any construction within the line of 100 meters, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of the coastline. So if the engineer uh, instructs the contractor to do something uh, beyond that particular 100 meters, the contractor can object saying, Mr. Engineer, you are, you are violating the protection of the environment or health and safety obligations. I'm not going to do this. He cannot challenge. That. So now 2017 version, it has been mod molded in such a way Contractor has more rights. Then, Mama, it's a marketing single link. Yeah, uh, right to vary. Over at the mother, get mindful contract administration. Can a katagra the mindful control. Can a key palani watch any rope. Can a concept again. Palani watch any time. A right can it about a Venus cream at a hackia of theater. My engineer, a Venus cream at the hackia yam tag duraka at a banda tabag any hackia of contractor. You know, like a gallop in net. A banda tabag any hackia expand will add the 99 version again. The 2017 version again. Alu devil at Kal, Aluinika the Maya, ninety nine version, they get taken over against BD two again. Good skin a day, good skin about a element Hatrakai, you know, materials, plant, temporary works, and contractors' equipment. A Hatra Labag and the Barina make in a particular variation like issue Karadi, a bit of acre, some punema, Magahar in the Pulua. It about a in Amatar, a bit of Pulua. May unforeseeable, can unforeseeability can a defined term make up. Glafidi credit book a value of a mother had it is pretty to get take a thing. Unforeseeability can cannot be easily foreseen by an experienced contractor at the base date. Kiladina, some of the Anglo tender submission date. Kiladina, I don't know that. Okay, get a moment. Unforeseeability can make an experienced contractor can it to foresee can under bury them. Experience contracting it to bear uh, reinforced concrete structure, structural steel, or even a scarakilla, four C current, a current bear, right? Tina uh, conditions are had yet, right? It's about a experience of our depth of my health and safety, get a hematatang environment, take a detrimental. You get a galloping net, a bit of an environment, you got a pair of current. Pull up. If you have your right to be again again. Right. Nalin, um, I just wanted to ask the question, how much time do I have from now onwards? Yeah, I think if you can stop by 9 o'clock or 9, because now it's 8.40, yeah. then we can yes. go for Q&A, at least 30 minutes of Q&A, so we can go up yes, to 9 I'll 30 maximum. So I'll, exactly. So I will wrap up in 15 minutes time. Okay. Right. Great. Great. Okay. Right. So this is right to vary. So uh, don't worry because I have prepared a presentation with all the clauses in FIDI. Yeah, as you can see here, it is about 39 slides, but uh, I will be explaining you some more important things that you should be knowing. You might have heard about this concept a lot. I don't have to explain this to you. And there is a video named Value of Engineering Rainbow which is uploaded by me into Mindful Contract Administrator. And you will more or less, you will find the uh, content of that one. But I will have to just explain you uh, certain things, right? The most, let me say newest, okay? Uh, the most recent definition of value engineering as looked into by, uh, actually it is not G, why am I changing this all the time? Right. This is Duncan Cartledge. Duncan Cartledge is one of my lecturers when I did my MSc. Uh, a well experienced quantity survey. You can find him on uh, LinkedIn. And he was the one who wrote this particular book called New Aspects of Quantity Surveying Practice. Uh, it is very useful for chartered quantity surveyors as well as contract administrators, engineers, architects, everyone. 
it says what is value engineering i'm not going to talk about the value engineering rainbow you just watch the video then you will love it you will um, you will get to know uh, this in a different perspective it is a discipline procedure directed towards the achievement of necessary function for minimum cost without detriment to quality reliability performance or delivery you might have heard about quality and reliability discipline procedure you know you might have attended work workshops pertaining to value engineering value management then necessary function you know uh, necessary function what does it mean and minimum cost yes of course cutting down the cost uh, very simple example the simplest example that i can tell you is why do you have uh, the uh, what do you call this uh, barriers whenever you are having a uh, when you impact your car right uh, in corner guards of the buildings right you might have seen there are in, in garages and car parks there are corner guards uh, fixed into the uh, walls and the uh, roads as well as the columns so corner guards doesn't need to be put to the full height of the uh, car because the vehicle shape is concave you know right vehicle is not like that except for the buses most of the vehicles the the widest part of the vehicle is at the bottom isn't it so even though a vehicle hit a particular wall the damage will be minimal right so therefore uh, instead of having a full height corner guards they reduce the corner guards see how it has uh, cultivated the habit of value engineering it is a discipline procedure they might have gone through uh, proper studies of uh, studying the, the the height of the car uh, before reducing that one and the necessary function what is the necessary function in order to avoid the collision of a car into a concrete structure isn't it so it has already been uh, satisfied because if it is a concave structure you don't need to have a full height only the part which is hitting and minimum cost now you reduce the height of the uh, uh, corner guard so that the cost will be minimized without detriment to quality this is the very important part the corner guard you are not giving a low quality corner guard it is the same material same durability same thickness same warranty everything is the same only the height has been changed the reliability it is the same performance is the same then the word delivery i specifically asked, i didn't understand when i read this particular definition and i specifically asked the the from the horse's mouth the person who has written dr uh, dr agan kartich he said priyanka delivery means as a whole you should deliver the project on time and at the cost which is specified and with the quality time cost quality and sustainability is another aspect as well so delivery means the project as a whole so that means any value engineering proposal cannot uh, object uh, or cannot go beyond the delivery of the building this is what it says simply so value engineering kiyana api godak ay danna deyak me eke definition ek gena thama mamme bohoma saralawa sinhala english ing me katha kare eke definition ekata alut alut wachana ekata una meka godak charted quantity service la paavitha karanawa thin wage dewa api katha karu right uh, value engineering gena example ekak i have put an example also you can go through that one <coughs> right uh this most of the things which i have discussed here has been related to the variations uh, and i wanted to explain a very important thing uh, regarding the recent ukraine war actually this was a case study which i have done uh the contractor has notified that a particular type of steel structure instructed under variation cannot be procured due to russia ukraine war question mark okay because sub clause 13.1 of pd credit book 99 talks about the damages okay the damages related to a particular uh, sorry sub clause 13.1 is actually right to vary uh, sub clause 17.3 and 4 talks about employers risk there is one of the employers risk it let's say loss due to procurement of goods in russia and ukraine war this is the contractor's argument he say loss due to procurement of goods nowhere within standard fidic it talks about loss of procurement of goods 
it talks about loss for the works then we went into a greater depth because the contractor's claim was there is a particular steel structure instructed under a variation which cannot be procured due to dire russia ukraine war now you might be thinking that uh, in a different way because ukraine is the largest one of the largest steel supplies to europe right so russia ukraine war may have deprived this one but the way that it ha he has claimed this thing as an employer's risk right is wrong this is what i wanted to tell you because uh, if there is a war they always talk about the direct effect or the direct consequence of the war which is known as loss of works loss to the works works means what is stationed on the site okay so under the notice provision he has not done the proper serving of the notice so therefore his claim was rejected i just wanted to highlight that one <coughs> having said that one uh, one more thing i wanted to tell you you might have uh, also uh, always uh, gone through all these things uh, uh, steel rebar prices right uh, especially if you are coming from a uh, estimation department of a contractor uh, you may observe what is known as london metal exchange right so when you are pricing you don't know at the time of pricing how you price the steel but there's a fluctuation of the steel prices which may affect your variations as well because uh, the, the likes of the example which i have given you there is less under reinforcement but let's say the contractor have priced it in a very very low price and he is suffering if it is an additional variation he pr priced it low it's like the stock market he is thinking that the uh, this is in the declining stage but all of a sudden again it came down up so it's very difficult for you to foresee there are answers to these sort of questions uh, such as framework agreements you might have heard about it framework agreements are always talking about uh, this sort of things right <clears throat> framework agreement means that you enter into a contract with a supplier uh, wherein the supplier can um, you you fix the price to a greater period of time so you have a less risk of that one right right uh, uh, regarding this omission which i wanted to tell you right uh, as i have told you omission is omission is like uh, you cannot take certain things out of the contract and give it to another party it was clear to all of you as i have explained to you uh, <clears throat> let us come back to uh, what is known as uh, the uh, the variation clause once again right because there are a lot of sub clauses related to the variations which i have listed here but i'm not going to explain everything about that <clears throat> let me explain one thing which <coughs> slipped through the uh, seals which is known as uh, the provisional sums right yes <clears throat> let me quickly explain this one uh, it is more or less the same but let me explain you what is the identification of a provisional sum actually when you sign a contract you allocate a certain amount of money for a provisional sum for example let's say there is a there's a mountain to be cut and carted away right but you haven't done a, a topographic survey of that particular mountain therefore you just look into the outer area of the mountain and do some quick calculation and then based on that calculation you put a sum and particular amount but you may not be using the whole amount which has been allocated because always you know the quantity surveyor is assessing it in a uh, higher value so adjustment of provisional sums is not considered as a variation in the first instance right if you change something to the works if you change something to the works and if you change the if you well define the works right then what has been given in the initial contract it's a very tricky thing please understand okay if you have given the real topographic survey amounts related to the uh, mountain and then you give a provisional sum yes that you are going to change something 
okay so adjustment provisional of provisional sums is normally considered as a separate entity in a final account you might have seen that so this variation clause is always talking about uh, the variation to the works but please be mindful you cannot ask the contractor to delete a particular line item in the boq because it's wrong okay it is not a variation the how it is defined is a drawing says what to do and a specification says how to do it so whenever you instruct a variation what you normally used to do is you ask the drawings to be changed you ask the specifications to be changed and accordingly the boq can change so this is the mechanism of the variation so this is what is about that one and then let us come back to uh, what we were talking about we spoke about what is variation what is revolving around the variation and whether the contractor can object to a variation now you know the reasons why it can be objected and we spoke in length about necessity and appropriateness of a variation and then we spoke about value engineering value engineering there's an exercise which i spoke put i'll give you a very little example value engineering value engineering not a cost cutting exercise you all know that part, right if you ask for a camry car and at the end of the day contractor builds a corolla car it is not value engineering but the way the value engineering clause has been drafted is like that there are certain areas where in uh, the employer anticipates certain uh, savings when he anticipates certain savings uh, you can and do such adjustments as such right there is a there are some videos which i have posted on value engineering so you can go through that one then dealing with omissions as i have told you the uh, the employer or the engineer is not empowered to uh, um, perform omissions to his own even man fancy it has to be justified and then i spoke about the provisional sums okay so now we are coming into the end of the session uh, nali Uh, over to uh, you. Uh, so the questions I can answer now. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Priyank. And uh, this message is for the, all the participants. Uh, we'll be having a little break of maybe maximum of two minutes of uh, publishing these certain sponsorship advertisements. Meantime, you have the attendance link in the chat box. number one in the zoom as well as in the youtube you, now you have the chat now you have the link to mark your attendance as a google form so please mark the attendance we have we will keep it open for only 15 minutes so it's now it's 956 we'll keep it until maximum of 9 uh, sorry 856 so we'll keep it until maximum of 915 so please mark your attendance it is essential to have your attendance to be marked you can either uh, click the link in your zoom as well as in the youtube so uh, sanjay uh, mr priyanka will uh, have a two minute break uh, to have some sponsored video links and i have compiled certain questions at the same time i would rather happy if you can take two three minutes to give some insight about the valuation of the variations as well so we we are okay with uh, what is mentioned in the boq if you have the boq rates it is quite obvious we can make the valuation but please uh, take some 2 2 3 minutes to explain something which are not in the boq something which are not defined how we can go with the valuation of the variation and there are there yes. are some questions you can amalgamate that question as well there was a, a basic question what is the difference between variation and the extra work hmm. variation and extra work so we'll have the discussion it later and sanjay can we have this advertisement to be played then yeah. we can have a two yeah. minute break yeah and uh, right please please go ahead nature is a masterpiece preserve its beauty while surrounding yourself in the transcendent aesthetics of your dreams
embrace a world of elegance and sustainability with Swiss Tech Aluminium. Swiss Tech Aluminium. Live in elegance. We have the most extensive product range of metal anchors on the market. From anchor bolts, drive-in anchors to concrete screws, Viot is capable of supplying it all. And in an outstanding quality at that, the European technical approvals of our products are absolutely outstanding. The engineering services we can provide for our products give planners the good feeling they can rely on Viot in this field. In a nutshell, this means that no other manufacturer of anchors is as versatile as Viot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there are some messages from many of the participants that you have lost your connectivity. Again, we have the again we have the Google form at the chat box. Even in the YouTube channel, also you have in, in chat box. We have the Google form. Please go ahead with uh, by marking your attendance. And uh, Mr. Priyanka, shall we start from uh, the variations, difference between the variation and the extra work? Number one. And number two, while you are explaining, I would rather happy if you can go ahead with uh, giving some insight about the calculations or the valuations of the variation as well. Uh, you are muted right now. Muted. Okay, yes. right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the difference between extra works and the variations. Actually, uh, works, when you are talking about, uh, the, if you take the 1987 PD equation as well, it talks about additional works, it talks about extra works, right? And there is an omission of work as well. So there are three elements into that one. Actually, additional works means you are changing the same item, right? And you are changing the quantity of the same item. Extra works means certain items which are not anticipated within the BOQ, contract BOQ. And we, uh, we in, actually, in this part of the world, we are using the word called the, the star rates. We develop an additional rate in this to that, that one. So that is extra works. So we, uh, if I say, since you are from a mathematical background, it's easy for me to say, if variations is a full set, you know, set, uh, extra works is part of the variation set, okay, sub element. I think it's clear, right, uh, Nali? Yes, 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 understood. Okay. And uh, may I go to, be, there are hundreds of questions comes into the chat box and the WhatsApp group. So I'll pick some of them with, with, with the limited time. And please, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please don't repeat the context and please uh, don't try to have it a slight changed question. We'll try to go with the concepts. So, uh, okay, the next question. When we prepare a variation order to pay for additional works, normally we consider about the contingencies and savings in the approved BOQ. But we don't consider the savings of provisional sums as savings in the BOQ. What is the reason? Yes. Now it is like this. Uh, <clears throat> when you assess the provisional sum, the contractor, when he is pricing the BOQ, he knows the ex exact amount of the provisional sums. Okay. Provisional sums is an allocation of chunk of money. The contractor's overhead and profit element, the risk, or any contingencies that you he may have taken into account is not reflected within the provisional sums. If you take two contractors, 
for both the contractors, the provisional sums are the same, right? So the measured works area is the element that is susceptible to the, that sort of changes. I think you understood that one, right? Okay, is that the one we call as the effective contract sum? Is it? Exactly. 100 percent. 100 percent. Effective okay. contract sum, yes. And uh, I have a technical issue. That's the question. In, in a measure and pay contract or project, mm -hmm. we were given an area to be to be post tension. But now the area has been doubled with new changes. Can we, can the contractor go for the, I think this is about not the area, like maybe the current prices of the prices, it has been doubled the, the cost. Can it be uh, a variation okay. or is it, is it a special circumstances? Yeah, see, now I'll give you a very simple example to this one. Now, uh, if the area has been doubled, you might be asking the question whether the rate is also susceptible to change, right? Now it's like this. Suppose you uh, you have to erect five uh, light poles. Okay, you have to erect five light poles, and the contractor has priced for this particular light pole in anticipation that there is a one truck who can accommodate only five light poles. Suppose you instruct six light light poles, or you instruct seven light poles. Okay. So you need two trucks. You need two trucks to transport seven light poles in place of five light poles. But three of them are redundant. As opposed to 10, you need two trucks. Then it will be divided by seven, not divided by five of the cost of the truck. Therefore, if the, if the quantity is doubled, right? First and foremost, you have to understand what is there a mistake, right? Uh, if there is any sort of a mistake, uh, you have to understand that it, that needs to be corrected. But quantity doubling in the sense, it seems to be me like it is a variation which was issued. So not only the quantity, but also the rate can be uh, challenged. There are certain criteria which is given in the very credit book as to how you can calculate that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Priyank. And I think this is a very important question for everybody. This is about the precedence of the documents. I think this, mm. this is one of a controversial and most people struggling to find out. And sometimes the contractor say, my DOQ, the drawings are the preceding documents and the consultant say, in an executing yeah. a work, what is the order yeah. of importance of these documents? Approved drawings, BOQ, and specification. Yeah. As an example, if something is not mentioned in the drawings, and in the BO mm. and in the BOQ, and if the consultant asks him to carry out because it is mentioned in the specification, mm. can we claim a variation? I think this is uh, this is applicable for mostly the lump sum contracts. So contractors are struggling sometimes. Something which might not mention in the drawing, but which is in the BOQ, and sometimes the other way around. And sometimes mm. if it is not mentioned B either BOQ and the specific drawing still something is mentioned in the specification hmm. so how, how do we account for this situation how right? do we manage right. this sort of a situation yes see first and foremost most of the people have a, a wrong notion that you penalize the contractor so get rid of that idea okay penalizing the contractor you have to get rid of that idea first and foremost the question which needs to be asked by the contractor is whether this is necessary for the completion of the works Suppose the specification says something and the drawing says something. Yes, of course, there is something called priority of the documents. Specification is above the drawings in PDIC 2017 and 99 as well. But they, uh, as a whole, they explain each one with the other, right? Just, just for pricing purposes only, that particular priority came into play. But when the contractor has a confusion, because there are two different purposes, okay? Please understand. Drawings says what to do. Specification say how to do. Not all the information contained in the specification can be reflected within drawing and vice versa. Okay. So therefore, you have to understand first the first question the contractor should ask and then the engineer should correctly assess is whether this is necessary for the completion of the works. Based on that, you have to take into account whether the part which is mentioned in the specification has to be done or not. If in case the priority of the document, the, the contractor has priced in accordance with the specification, right, and the drawing says something more than the specification, yes, it will trigger a variation. That is, uh, that is understood, right, based on the, uh, uh, based on the priority of the documents, right. So uh, sometimes, uh, case by case, it may change as well, 
uh, with the way that it has been defined. So uh, if you can have a specific example in re with regard to that and the wording that you put in your tender document as well. Sometimes in the term tender document, you say you have to price by taking into account all the items, right? In the in the in the tender ITT instructions renderers also you speak about uh, the priority of the doc document in the case of a discrepancy at the time of pricing. That is also given. So based on that, you can take a call. Clear? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Priyanka. Thank you. And uh, again, people were asking about this omission part and giving it to somebody else. I think sometimes it is been practiced in this part of the kind of this part of the world may not be in the mm -hmm. Middle Eastern region. And what are the legal grounds or what are the uh, op options the contractor has if something which is highly priced, maybe mistakenly or may sometimes be unfairly, but sometimes if the client or the employer find a suitable or a way of doing by somebody else in a cheaper price. So yes, then you have to most of the times in, in, in this country, you can say you, you I, I don't, I have nothing to hide you. I think in, in Sri Lanka, you, people are practicing because end of the day, it's all about money and I find it. Is there any legal way of handling it, like mutually yes. managing it without, you know, uh, having bad names with uh, either parties? Hmm. Yes. Now, actually, uh, this is why it is important that the omission has been introduced in PD 2017. Uh, if the parties agree also, right, there, there is something called uh, if the parties agree for omission, sometimes you can do that. But let me let me explain you what this Omission, there was a Canadian case actually, and uh, most of the common law countries consider omission as something which is being totally deducted. And you are not going to reintroduce. You are not going to reintroduce that one once you deduct, because the word omission means that you erase this one. Okay. So uh, when it comes to the context of the legality, uh, the bona fide, you know, that good intention, uh, good faith. In good faith, if you are doing a dealing like that and you omit something and give it to someone else, the contractor can sue, actually. Contractor can sue. It's a breach of contract, right? Uh, say they're saying that you haven't acted in good faith. But you have to check one thing, Nalin, in the Sri Lankan law, right? How this omission has been taken into account. If there is any court case as such, right? Where is the precedence can be taken into account. Most of the common law country cases, uh, it is very clear that omission cannot be done uh, in with the view of giving into another party but there is a there is an uh, escalation i'll tell you one one example sometimes with the agreement of the parties if you go to pd 2017 it says with the agreement of the parties omission can be done suppose contractor has done a genuine mistake if he continues this with this one let's say instead of concrete rate 50 riyals per cubic meter he put 5 riyals per cubic meter if the contractor does something like that for a big work, he will go bankrupt. Okay, but the employer actually has got the budget for that one. So the employer and the contractor can mutually agree because from the employer's perspective, rather than terminate in this particular contractor when he goes bankrupt, better to continue with this contractor and give it to some, some other person who can do it for a cheaper price. So that is called ex extra share claims, mutual agreement that can happen. But purely if you talk about contractual grounds, yes, legally, uh, the contractor has a right if it has been given to another party at a better price in view of enriching yourself. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And I, I, I have another question. I think most probably this is from client or consultant perspective, no, obviously not the contractor's perspective, when the amount of work increased double, increased to double, doing double amount of work, unit rate may be low. Sometimes I think this is about the savings of the overheads, I think. Sometimes doing more work may be much profitable to the contractor. Can we adjust the unit rate when we increase the quantity? I think this yes. is about the limitations of the variation and people have that mindset. I think the, the older version, the 15% of limitations. Or it is not the new, yes, that's correct. Now the new version takes into account each and every BOQ rate separately. You know that 0.1 and all these things are there. There's a very nicely written uh, paragraph regarding uh, variations in each and every country. As Nalin, you have rightly mentioned, uh, 
this 10%, 15% thing is not there within the FIDIC 99 and 2017 version at all. So it has to be taken into account uh, case by case. Right. OK, thank you. And uh, another one, due to this price crisis, is it accountable for variation? Or is it again the same question? I think this is a very special case. And how you find it in the Middle Eastern region? I'm sure that the impact, the inflation and the Ukraine war and all might have simply impacted the industry in Middle East as well. So how it can be, like, is there any mutual termination or mutual uh, stoppage? Yes. Or is there any mutual yes. allowances yeah. given to contractors? Yeah, see, the most of the time, uh, we enter into settlement agreements, you know, in most of the cases, uh, when this sort of a, thing comes uh, to alter the terms of the contract you know actually if it is a genuine case because in most of the contracts the price is fixed price fluctuation is not allowed we have taken it out because it's a fixed price uh, contracts which we are normally using in this part of the world uh, but uh, when you talk about the uh, substantial changes in the rates by looking into the what do you call it, humanitarian grounds and all we enter into a supplement to the agreement, right? Supplement to the agreement and accordingly we adjust uh, if it is a fair case. And uh, one more thing I want to tell you now, for example, fluctuation of oil prices, uh, because it says if there are any changes in the law, right? So uh, in the context of change in the price uh, legalized, uh, given by the government, by, by, the, by the government, not other, any other bodies, by the law, uh, you can change, right? Uh, but uh, if it is changed globally and then uh, if it is an anticipated, because if you talk about the employer's point of view, there are risks from the employer's part as well. You might have seen. So this is actually the contractor's risk that they are pricing. Like that we can do. Yes, in, in Sri Lankan context, there are a lot of financial issues as well, like opening an LC and there are some certain deposits to be paid for a contract. I think there are a lot of uh, financial costs as well involved. And there's another question, what is defined and undefined provisional sums? Is there a term called yes. defined provisional sum and undefined provisional sum and how it can be? Yes, yes. It is coming in NRM actually, new uh, new rules of RICs, new rules of measurement uh, uh, looks into that one like this. Actually defined provisional sum means you know exactly what are the type of works that you are going to do. Undefined provisional sums can be a contingency. Right, you are saying you 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 use some loose words like modifications, right? You are allowing a certain amount of money for modifications, but a defined term, uh, modi uh, provisional sum is that you are saying okay, you excavate and cut away a particular chunk of uh, particular chunk of uh, soil, then you know that the involved the rate involved into that particular work is known. So it is something like a defined thing, right? Undefined thing is mostly like a contingency. So that is how it is defined. If you go to NRM 2, I believe, NRM 2 uh, gives the correct definition of the defined provisional sums and are the undefined provisional sums. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Priyank. And uh, there's another question. If the engineer is supposed to raise variations as for the FIDIC 1987, who's called an engineer? Can, it, can he be an architect, QS, or an engineer? I think mm -hmm. it is a defined institute itself, right? Yeah, yeah. See, the, the, that difference has been distinguished. If you see the FIDIC 2017 version, they talk about the people as natural persons, you know. Contractor's representative is a natural person. The engineer is an entity, right? So that distinguishment is not there within FIDIC 99 and SPD 2. But yes, of course, the engineer is not a profession of the engineer. It's the defined term engineer, which starts with capital E which is pertaining to a, an organization. So architect, architect can be an uh, engineer if he's a sole proprietor of a particular organization and he can be considered as an engineer, not a question. Right. Okay, and thanks. And provisional sums during variation event, whether to approve by engineer under which clause, FIDIC only 13.4 or any other? Uh, the question See, is, FIDIC is 13. 13.4, 13.4 sometimes refer to when you are at, see, assessing the variation, there are a couple of ways that you can do uh, assessing the provisional sums. One is you give it to the contractor directly. Okay. So it will be governed by the BOQ rates. So it will directly revert it to the variation clause. And if it is a nominated subcontract or a nominated supplier, 
you have to have a separate document between the contractor and the nominated subcontractor so it is basically revolving around uh, 13.4 but most of the clauses in clause 13 can also be applicable even 13.2 can be applicable when you appoint a nominated subcontractor and later on there are valuation of sorry uh, value engineering clauses all right thank you and th this is pretty much the same uh, question with uh, with figures it is mentioned if the contract uh, project value say 1 billion and due to mm. current situation it has gone up to 2 billion now the client mm. and the contractor agree to perform work up to 1 billion because i think with the limitation of the budget and terminate the contract so can the contractor ask for loss of profit yes there are ways and means the uh, loss of profit can be you mean uh, increasing it by from 1 million to 2 million or the other way around no, i did not get other, like say the, the the value has been the the current value has been increased up to 2 billion but the employer has a budget of 1 billion and original mm -hmm. contract was 1 billion so the mm -hmm. contractor will finish it by 1 billion because of the budget budgetary limitations but it would have gone to 2 billion or he has lost certain amount of loss of profit so that can be claimed i think the the termination itself is a mutual termination at that point these terms has to ah, be negotiated okay. i believe correct correct 100 percent. if the employee is at default there is a provision for uh, loss of profit claim but if it is a mutual termination with the understanding because the the, the notion is like this you cannot ask for loss of profit for unexecuted work it's like that uh, you have this particular bottle but you are yes. not selling this particular bottle right so if you are not selling this particular bottle, you cannot ask for that uh, uh, overhead and profit, you know, the profit element. But if the employee is at default, that generates the contractor to lose his rights, you know, his opportunity cost. All those things will come into play. But as a mutual agreement, normally the loss of profit will not be claimed. It is based on the terms and conditions of the mutual agreement. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. And if you wouldn't mind staying 10 minutes more, and yeah. Sanjay, is there any opportunity to give this uh, raise hand participants to shoot their questions directly? Are we going for these verbal questions as well? We have, we have two minutes. raise hands. Sorry, we have two raise hands and gentlemen, now it is three. And if we have been yeah. limited to maximum five raise hands, and please, uh, gentlemen, ladies, if you have this question, please shoot it very briefly and quickly. And we will limit it to 30, second, 30 to 40 seconds maximum and our resource person will reply within one minute's time. So we we'll limit it to maximum five questions, Sanjay. Yeah. We'll start with Nadir Milan. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Please. please yes, I can hear you. Okay. Sir, uh, in the local context, in the uh, we have in preparation of the bill of quantities, we are definitely we are allocation of the contingencies in the allocation for the any, especially the government project. But when we are the uh, application in the current context, we have all the variations and the provisional sums, provisional sum, any adjustment, all are covered under the contingency figure. Sometimes in the some projects are not applicable for the additional cost other than the, the provision of the contingencies. If you have any contractual provision for the in these situations. See, the contingency is actually a risk component, Nadira. First, you have to understand that one. So, uh, how to administer the risk component of contingencies is actually at the discretion of the employer and the contractor as a, as a, I mean, combined, you have to do it combined. Now, if you take a specific case example, you have my email ID, right? Uh, I can explain to you it in length, right? You take one specific case study, you can draft it. Please do not mention the names of the company or something like that. I will give you a specific answer to your question. Okay. Uh, Mohammed Rafis. Yes. Uh, yes. Mr. Yes, Pierre, meantime, uh, yeah, meantime, again, there, there is a situation here in Sri Lanka as well, because uh, especially this airport project, uh, mm. the BIA project has been uh, stopped by there are some finance due to the mainly due to the financial crisis. So there were a lot of uh, prominent contractors who involved with this project and can they go for loss of profit or that sort of claims? There were some questions from the audience. Any any mm. advice you can give? Yes, yes. Um, you, you can go for loss of profit if the employees at default, 
there are certain cases where the employer is at default. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, cost plus profit. Now there are certain places where you can see within within FIDIC itself the word cost plus profit is there. Contractor can claim for cost plus profit, not only the cost. So whenever it is mentioned as cost plus profit, yes, you can claim for the loss of profit. That is the answer to that question. Okay, Hello, Sanjay, we'll go with the moment, Rafis, please. Yeah. So regarding our project that uh, we almost, we are in the, under the extension of time, but the meantime, mm -hmm. that due to the fuel crisis and the material purchasing due to this uh, crisis time from the last six months, we continuously informed with the uh, engineer uh, regarding these uh, issues, then uh, we got some certain kind of uh, extension of time. At the meantime, mm -hmm. with the due to this uh, crisis that uh, we are very difficult to manage the entire uh, project scope, which means that the certain uh, area of the scope of work, which is uh, which can be operate the project and the do everything, but we are planning to reduce the scope of, which means that if a project area covered 15 houses, we are planning to reduce around 10,000 or 500 houses from our scope of work because of mm. this crisis. So, but uh, so it is an omission, right? Isn't it? It's omission. Yes, simply say omission. Is it possible? Mm. The reason which I mentioned, crisis is uh, possible to do such kind of omission in our project. Yeah. See, it's like this now. Sometimes, if the crisis situation comes, the employer's uh, uh, termination, right? Employer can do it. Uh, termination for convenience also he can do, right? If the crisis situation comes. Uh, yes, they can do that one. They can do uh, the omission. But uh, if he doesn't have the intention to uh, give it to another party, and of course, with the uh, agreement of the contractor, if you see the PD 2017 wording, it's very specifically mentioned that the, with the agreement of the contractor, you can do that. So sorry for the interference. That this request, uh, we are the contractor, we are requesting to, to uh, for the engineer to consider for omission. Ah, you contractor, <laughs> you, okay. Now, in that case, actually, the uh, employer's intention uh, that is also come to, that should that means you are varying the terms of the contract you are actually varying the terms of the contract so because the thing is uh, when you are talking about uh, time for completion time for completion is linked with the contract so if you reduce based on the contractor's request the time for completion will be reduced there is no argument about that accordingly there are knock on effect there is a knock on effect on the program there's a knock-on effect on the resources being implemented. All these things will come into play, right? And the employer, on the other hand, will be able to enjoy the facility of half-done houses earlier than he has expected, okay? So it's another flip side of the coin uh, so that he can earn revenue half of the houses earlier than he has expected. So this is some, most of the people, they don't think about that. So looking at the pluses and minuses of this sort of a thing, Sometimes the employer may agree, but it has to be uh, reinforced with the supplement to the contract agreement. You cannot do it of your own. Okay, Mr. Priyak, there's another, I think this is a very important question, in, especially in Sri Lankan context. In government tender BOQs, the item called, uh, we have an item called miscellaneous. Hmm. Uh, we always have the right to claim this amount or what is the stance? Yeah, that is actually dependent. I think the best thing is when you're talking about the miscellaneous, please read the new NRM2 version, right? It is very specifically mentioned what are the things which can be included within uh, miscellaneous, the, the, the rules which has been given. So uh, in the general context, never talk about the miscellaneous because when it is such subjected to variations, most of the time we are facing problems, right? So yes, refer to NRM2. If there is any specific question related to that one, I am happy to answer. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, there are hundreds of requests that uh, to share your presentation. I'm sure that we can do it hopefully yeah. by next week. And both the presentations, yeah. please. If yeah, yeah, uh, we are we are pretty much sure that there are a lot of proprietary rights, and I'm I'm sure that this uh, participant would uh, use it uh, like ethically, I should say, giving the due respect to the author. Who's uh, Mr. Priyanka and ladies and gentlemen, we are almost uh, done with the timing and we'll give one opportunity to Chanaka Samarajiva very briefly. Chanaka? Yeah, I, I am, yeah, uh, I'm regarding, I'm talking regarding the omission part uh, in the perspective of uh, engineer's point of view. If your contractor 
is uh, repeatedly showing uh, low progress and delay in the uh, project works. And uh, as an engineer, we need to that uh, completion of certain part of the project immediately. So that in, in that case, can engineer's point of view, can we do the omission of that work scope from the original contract? Very important. Very good question. Very good question, Chanaga. We don't call it as an omission. Okay. Works will remain the same. We get it done by another party and contract uh, contra charge from the contractor. That can be done. Mostly, uh, this can be done when the contractor is uh, continuously failing. You have to notify him, right? There are certain provisions in the feeding which we can do, but we don't call it as omission, as I have explained in the beginning as well. Legally, omission means that you erase from the total thing, right? You cannot reintroduce that particular work. So, what you're saying is it is not the omission that you are talking in terms of the valuation of variations, BOQs, and all these things. Omission of the works is not the appropriate term. Taking out the works from the contractor and doing it by another contractor and contra charge from the contractor, yes, there are notice provisions uh, available in PDIC if the contractor is continuously failing. Right. Uh, we are on the dot. We are nine, uh, at 9.30 of time. I think uh, there, there may be a lot of questions and uh, I'm sure that uh, the, all the participants can use WhatsApp groups and um, I, we will introduce Mr. Priyanka's YouTube channel separately and you can have the chats and in the future as well, there are a lot of uh, a lot of programs conducted by Mr. Priyanka himself, and maybe sometimes in, in CECB's perspective as well. And we have some more, six more sessions as well in the future. So please keep your questions flowing and get, get them ready, and we'll shoot them to the other resource personnel as well. And Mr. Priyanka will be available, uh, hopefully, by his own channels, and there are his uh, there are programs conducted by himself so we'll share the details and mr priyanka yeah. you need any time to just explain your future plans especially once yes. you're doing your programs yeah it's, it's yeah actually there is a, yes thank you nalin actually there is an introductory program called my mindful contract administrator uh, on uh, next week uh, so uh, try to attend that one then you can decide from that introductory uh, program uh, yeah i'm i'm conducting a course under CPDS engineering consultants. Uh, that particular course is actually uh, worthwhile to do. Uh, 24 hours of uh, CPD hours will be covered in that one. Uh, actually, it is a paid course, right? So uh, if somebody is interested, uh, they can uh, participate in that one as well. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I will be continuing with my uh, YouTube channel postings. I'll be participating in my CPDs. Uh, you, you are always welcome. I will keep Nalin posted as the focal point so that uh, if Nalin has got uh, uh, access to all of you, uh, any of my CPDs, definitely you are always welcome. So there is no issue at all. And I'm willing to help and I'm very happy to be helping uh, the Sri Lankan community um, in Sri Lanka because I have been serving uh, Oman for about 15 years now in UAE. Uh, so uh, it is our duty as uh, Mr. Alvis has rightly mentioned we are the products of uh, free education and the reciprocation of that free education is of paramount importance and we love our country even though we are uh, away from our country we are watching our country and we expect your success only success success and success all in all spheres thank you thank you thank you mr priyanka and i also have to mention a few words about you and the people like of your kind because we can see a lot of uh, i personally have a lot of friends works and resides abroad and they sometimes make their argument and make their advices to make this country a better place through facebook only not by their own actions but i'm sure that uh, mr priyanka himself has come forward and give his and share this knowledge as a very good step to this, especially these young budding engineers and the other professionals. And this is the way to serve the country, I think that is at the topmost level. With that remark, ladies and gentlemen, let's congratulate uh, Mr. Priyanka for his future endeavors. And unfortunately, this is only the session, only the second session, only the two sessions which we can involve with him in this particular course. And I'm sure that he will be available for future courses or future knowledge sharing sessions. And, uh, we would love to see and your cherry's face and the way you deliver and the way you elaborated was perfectly done and i'm sure that many of our audience have what most of the most of the content and 
this YouTube, with this uh, recordings could be uploaded into YouTube and at any time, even as I shared with you last time, we had uh, over 3,700 views. So I'm sure that this session would, would also be shared among all the professionals around the globe, I should say, especially the Sri Lankan community. So that could be a national service by yourself. With that remark, ladies and gentlemen, you all were a good audience and there were certain humps and bumps here and there, but please bear with us because handling thousand and some more participants in the YouTube channel is, is a huge challenge. Uh, there were a lot of people behind these curtains, Sanjay, Sarasi, and especially the training unit of CECB led by Chandana. And there are some other people who help this, and especially the Zoom masters. And uh, as well as we have uh, some lot of people who help this and who are not visible in front of this audience, especially Dilum and the supporting team. With that uh, gratitude for them as well, we would like to conclude the session and we will see you. And we have another six more sessions and that would definitely be uplift your career and your professionalism. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.